So, um, for the cameras, can you just start off by introducing yourself? Let me see. Picky, picky, pick. Yo, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm Professor Griff, ex-minister, public enemy, from Strong Island, New York. Well, it's Long Island, we call it Strong Island. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know, I am my father's son. Can you describe to me what it was like growing up around hip-hop culture in, in the 70s? Like, what's your memories? Um, I guess the way you phrase that question is kind of awkward because it wasn't hip-hop then. It was just kind of like, like I said in the lectures, what we do is what we did. When they called it hip-hop, mm -hmm. it was one of those things that was kind of like, it was one of those kind of exciting, kind of real happy kind of times where something fresh and new was happening. Mm -hmm. If you was the first one to get the, the mixtape or the, the Crash Crew or the Cold Crush tape from the city, mm -hmm. it was the thing to have because ain't nobody had it. Mm -hmm. um, if you was the DJ and you was the only one with certain break beats and that kind of thing, it was the thing to do, it was the thing to have, it was the thing to be about. So it was a very exciting time, it was a very unpredictable time because um, as the hip hop thing was going down, you know, Reagan was uh, putting this thing down as far as uh, instituting new laws and this kind of thing um, in America. So it was a very creative time, a very exciting time, but also a very critical time. So um, you kind of figure, I was a teenager then, so it was cool. So we had something to do. Graffiti, break dancing, MCing, DJing. It was something to do, it was a break from the norm. Mm -hmm. We didn't know it would turn into what it is today, mm -hmm. both positive and negative, but it was something to do. Okay. The public enemy was very political in the 80s and early 90s, and it kind of marked a change in hip hop culture when discussing American culture. Mm -hmm. So um, say you prefer black culture, you more or less hit a point on. So um, what was going on during the Reagan and Bush era? As a whole, what would you say? <coughs> well, when you're talking about politics, yeah, you have to be able to define the politics that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Politics is the science of governing people. So, if the president at that time, what President Reagan mm -hmm. was um, trying to establish, like I said in the earlier question, was trying to establish new laws mm -hmm. to try to put a stranglehold and a tight grip on the inner city. But you kind of figure, man, uh, crack, all kind of drugs, all kind of things was going on in the hood, man. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop spoke to that. Hip-hop gave people a way out, uh, a way to express themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Politically, um, we had just got out of that era where they disseminated the ranks of the Black Panther Party. They destroyed all of the black revolutionary organizations. Mm -hmm. All of the, the, a lot of the poets that did put it down and making revolutionary poetry and revolutionary songs. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were on drugs and null and void. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of things, crazy kind of things going on in America. And I think all of that and then some was the things that gave birth mm -hmm. to hip hop. Okay. Now, ask any woman that's been pregnant. Being pregnant um, has its you have your good times and your bad times. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pleasurable pain mm -hmm. to give birth. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But no one understands at the time that you know you're pregnant, you have a responsibility, mm -hmm. a divine responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you know you're carrying life in you. Mm -hmm. This is the way it was with giving birth to this thing we call hip hop now. And then when, it, it, the, when hip hop came out, mm -hmm. everyone had said, it would, it's a fad, it would only last for a couple of years. It's going to come and it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't understand hip hop. It wasn't a genre of music. It was a genre of music that included all the other genres of music. So it was something special. Mm -hmm. And um, so when the political aspects of uh, what hip hop was about was being espoused by Melly Mel and some other artists, mm -hmm. that's what woke us up on Long Island. Okay. Because we weren't in the city. Mm -hmm. We was in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And we felt the effect. We felt the ripple effect of hip hop. Say the film Scarface um, is kind of seen amongst um, people as a blueprint for hip hop. Yeah. 
and you said the blueprint for hip hop. Well, that's that's the argument basically. It's kind of seen as the blueprint for hip hop because it's about a person even coming from the slums and coming up. So um, it, obviously, yeah, but he came up selling drugs and killing people. I know, but then obviously now. As a whole, people are saying it's about coming up as a whole, you know what I mean, in general, coming up from the slums and making mm. it big and successful business. So I just wanted to know, what is your views on the whole American dream? First about? of all, there's no such thing. An American dream is a misnomer. Uh -huh. It's an American nightmare. For you yeah. for you and anyone else to say that, you know, we're either chasing after the American dream or living the American dream, mm. just because we're in this thing called hip hop, mm. that is crazy. Mm. First of all, Scarface, you know, that movie was about the Cuban exile yeah, yeah. came over because Cuba had kicked them out. Yeah. These people were let out of prison and they came to America. Mm -hmm. And America accepted them in. Mm -hmm. And then this cat came over here selling drugs, killing and murdering mm -hmm. people. I don't see how that relates to hip hop. But I understand what you're saying because that movie was the number one movie yeah. among hip hop artists. That they revere as probably the number one movie. They've taken their name mm -hmm. from Scarface, mm -hmm. the ideology, the thought behind it, mm -hmm. his ways and actions, mm -hmm. his dress, yeah. his name. Gains now, it's coming out. Right. It's so, yeah, so it's critical. But that goes to show you how uh, this quote unquote American criminal culture mm -hmm. found its way and married its way into the hip hop. You're culture. kind of into like. With reference to hip hop as a whole, uh, what respect do you give to pioneers like Cool Hurts and African Bombata and Grandmaster Flash and the people? We still revere section? them as the godfathers of hip hop. Yeah. And every chance we get, man, um, we honor and revere them. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to teach uh, young people who the fathers of hip hop are. Mm -hmm. And what was hip hop like during that first decade mm -hmm. before Public Enemy? Mm -hmm. That's the thing we need to be telling. Not only me, but the average person mm -hmm. needs to know that story. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Public enemy, including obviously yourself, are uh, now role models in society, definitely amongst you. So what advice would you give to them getting into hip hop now? Well, first of all, I see myself as a role model. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm concentrating on being me and being the best person I can be. Mm -hmm. If some young cat, Hassan or somebody, mm -hmm. look up to me, and say, okay, Grip is a cool guy. You know, I want him to be my mentor, or I want to pattern my life mm -hmm. after him. Mm -hmm. We'll give thanks and praise to Almighty God Allah. But mm -hmm. that's not something that you'd readily want because mm -hmm. that's a heavy responsibility. Me being responsible for thousands and millions of young people's minds is a heavy responsibility. Mm -hmm. But it's a responsibility and a duty that all of us that are quote unquote uh, successful, that are in hip hop, mm -hmm. It's a responsibility that we have to take on our shoulders. We have it's part of the job. It comes with the turf. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Definitely. Definitely. And then just end it. What other things do you have in store for the future? Um, the near future, like getting something to eat and trying to make my <laughs> way back to London. But nah, um, I'm doing like like Kalima said earlier. I'm doing a project for the children mm -hmm. called Kid Hoppers. Kids is an acronym, caring individuals, developing skills, in which she had mentioned. Um, I wrote a book on the music industry. It's a 150 page uh, A to Z guide of the music industry on how to get in and stay in the game. Okay. I have a band called The Seventh Octave, okay. a rap metal band, and the uh, album's coming out next year. Um, and I'm writing this book based on the lecture that I gave today, The Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop. Hopefully I can use that as a tool to give it to brothers like you mm -hmm. to help educate the young people. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Peace, bro. All right. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. All right. You the man.